I've had people tell me here they had no idea what I was talking about. And friend, I'm telling you, I don't want it to ever be said from Gables Creek Baptist Church that I never heard the preacher tell me I was going to hell or I was going to heaven. So Luke chapter number 16, and I'll, I'll go as the Lord leads today. There was a certain man, a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously, sumptuously every day. Now let's take a look at this rich man. By the way, the title of my message is Going to Hell and Who Cares? Going to Hell and Who Cares? Now look at this rich man for a minute. His name is not given. The name rich man is a Latin name for uh, Dives, and so some would call his name Dives. But the Bible don't say that. I, I can't find that word Dives in the Bible, so I'm going to call him the rich man. Well, this certain rich man, so see, it's a certain man. It's not just a rich man. It is a certain rich man that Jesus is telling us about here. And he was clothed in purple, which was the finest of color, the finest, the most riches of color, of royalty the pur color purple was. And he was clothed in purple and the finest of linen, and he ate what he wanted, when he wanted, what time he wanted, and how much he wanted. Every day. This was his life. He had everything this world could ever offer. He had all of it. He had all the money that he could ever spend. We could liken him to the Donald Trumps of this day or the Bill Gates of this day. He was that kind of rich. He had that kind of money. He had all the, all the servants that could serve him and wait on him hand and foot. He didn't have to do anything. I don't know what he did for entertainment, but I've got an idea that he, that, he, uh, that he hunted, and I'll tell you why after a while. But whatever he'd had, he, you know, he'd go out, to his, go out to his barn, and there was the finest chariot that man could make. <coughs> the most expensive horses or whatever drew those, drew those chariots that you could ever buy. He had it all. Now, whoever here today can, in your mind, can think of someone that is that rich? I know some people that's got everything they want. Don't want anything else, don't need anything else, don't need me, don't need you, don't need God. Well, this is the state of this rich man. He had everything that he could possibly ever want, and uh, he, you know, he just did what he wanted to do. Now, I don't find in Scripture, some people make this man out to be an evil, wicked, wretched, vile man. I don't know that. I don't know. The Bible don't say he was a drunkard. The Bible don't say that he was mean. The Bible don't say that he was a crook. It don't say that he got his money by ill gain. The Bible just said there was a rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. That's what the Bible says. So you picture in your mind this rich man that all that he had, and you think of him maybe as the George Vanderbilt in our, uh, you know, in, in our time, and we see his great mansion, and we compare it all to the Biltmore House, and we think of that man. Let's, let's use that man and think he's got everything he could ever want. But he was lacking in his life. He had everything that money could buy. But he was still, he, there was something he couldn't purchase with money. Something he couldn't purchase uh, with his credibility in the community. As far as I know, he had good credibility. He was a, I don't know that there was the evil about him. But he had something lacking in his life. Now, throw the tables here just a minute. Let's look at the next man the Bible, the Bible mentions and gives name to. And I believe there's a reason that the Bible gives him a name, and I'll tell you that in just a minute. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, laid at the gate of the rich man, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So here we find the rich man got all he can, can possibly want. And here we find the beggar that has nothing. We find the beggar that is, laid at his, uh, that is laid at his gate and the dogs come and lick his sores. Now, why, tell me, is he laying at his gate? He is laying at his gate 
because and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs come and licked his sword. So he just wants something to eat. You picture a man that has nothing. He doesn't have transportation. Some of his buddies, some of his friends, some of his poor people that they all got together and took care of one another would carry this beggar and lay him at the gate of the rich man every day. Take him down there and lay him at the gate. Why? So that he could try to have something to survive on for that day. He was incapable of doing anything for himself. He was incapable for work, from working. He couldn't earn his living. Something, some terrible disease had struck him in that which he could not do one thing for himself. He was totally helpless, but he had everything. Now, wait a minute, preacher. You just told us he didn't have anything. He didn't, but he had everything. Amen? Now, he was covered with stores. He had no money. His clothes were ragged. He didn't have anything to eat. All he wanted was what would come that they would throw out. Now, I don't see that the rich man here, I don't see that he come by every day, and he might have, but I don't see that he come by every day and said, somebody get this man out from away from my gate. I believe the rich man was indifferent to him laying at his gate. I don't believe he liked him, or I don't believe he didn't like him. I just believe that was a common thing of the day. And that rich man, or that beggar laid there, and he had, you know, okay, there he is. Somebody give him something. Maybe. But he just desired the crumbs, the leftovers, from the rich man's table. Maybe I'll get something to eat today that will sustain me for another day. And here come the dogs. Now, this is why I think the man might have been a hunter, is because he may have had a... a, a uh, a pack of dogs that he used to hunt with. Or maybe it was wild dogs that run around there. I don't know. But anyway, the dogs, see, he wanted the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table, and then maybe the dogs got that, or maybe he would get some of it. But here come the dogs. And they would come and lick the sores. They, it doesn't say that they tried to eat him or devour him, but the dogs would come and lick his sores. And that was helpful that was kindness of those dogs that God sent along to lick the man's sores to try to give him some comfort and some relief. So here come the dogs. Now, picture yourself. Man's got everything living in the mansion. Man laying at his gate's got nothing, but he's got everything. The man living in the mansion's got everything, but he's got nothing. That's entirely backwards from what we think in life. We we'll look at people and say, boy, they got everything they could ever want. If they're lost without God, they don't have anything except what they've got right here. When they die, that won't go nowhere with them. What's the old saying? We never see a hearse pulling a U-Haul. Let me tell you something, friend. We see the contrast in these two people, and then we see what happens to them. They're as far removed from each other as possibly could be in this life. From the richest to the poorest. You know what I also noticed about this beggar? He didn't complain. He wasn't saying, oh me, I'm terrible. I'm laying here and I'm dying. Now, let me bring my mama back to you just a minute. And tell you what she said on her deathbed. I never heard her one, one time did I ever hear mama say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die. Oh me, I'm dying. Not one time did I hear her complain about dying she only said, I'm going home. Amen? I don't read of this beggar uh, uh, of complaining or groaning about his condition. Mom was a sick woman. She had a lot wrong with her, but I never heard her complain about it, child. She said, I'm going home. Doctors tell me I'm going home here in a little bit. A little bit later, she went home. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, friend. This beggar, though as wretched as he was, it seemed like, and is as uh, full of sores as he was, and as bad off as he was, he didn't complain. Doesn't, he, doesn't you wonder? Don't it make you wonder sometimes? While it seems like the the wicked uh, uh, prosper and the godly uh, they live without. You see that so much in life. Seems like the wicked prosper. But listen, you got to think this, man. If you're lost without God and you've got the whole world at your fingers, you don't have nothing but what you've got right now. You better enjoy it. 
And if you're here and you're struggling in life and you're living paycheck to paycheck like most of us are and you don't know where the money's coming to pay the bills or how you're going to buy the groceries or how you're going to pay your taxes and all of that, let me tell you something. If you got Jesus in your heart, you got everything. Amen. Listen, this ain't going to last forever. This life, this life ain't going to last forever. Now, we see these two men in comparison, how they are, and then we see what they both had in common. One was rich, one was poor, but they had one thing in common. Death was coming to their door. Death was coming to their door. And it came to pass that the beggar died. And notice the description here. The beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Boy, isn't that a story of the death of a, of a saint? That, that man died, and here came, here came the angels and bore him into Abraham's bosom. In our case, it'd be bore, bear us into the throne room of God. Amen. Into the, into the arms of the Lord. Amen. God's people die well. Amen. And as we see this beggar dies and he carried immediately into Abraham's bosom. Now his body didn't go, but his soul did, his spirit did, and he went into Abraham's bosom. The Bible tells us that. That's where this beggar that had nothing, that's where he went. It wasn't, he didn't. Listen, if you're rich and you've got the Lord, praise God, use it for the glory of God. Amen. Not everyone that's rich is going to hell, by the way, in case someone gets the wrong idea about what I'm preaching to you. Not everybody that's got a lot of money is going to hell. If they've got Jesus, they'll be there too. Amen? Most people I see with a lot of money know the Lord. They use it for the glory of God. Amen? But here's this beggar. He dies, and he's, he's gone into Abraham's bosom. But they had this in common. They both died. The rich man also died and was buried. That's it. The beggar was carried into Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and was buried. Why was the rich man not given a name? Probably, if we look at it this way, he wasn't given a name because his name wasn't in the book of life. Lazarus was given a name because he was in the book of life. But they both died. One went to heaven. How do you know the other went to hell? The next verse. And in hell he lift up his eyes. Immediately after he died in hell he lift up his eyes. Friend, I don't want to leave no doubt in your mind today that immediately when you part from this life you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. You're going to wake up in glory or you're going to wake up in the flame of hell. But in hell he lift up his eyes, and the Bible goes on to tell us, and, be, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and part of his torment was seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. There he sees Lazarus who had nothing, he that had everything. Lazarus is in heaven in Abraham's bosom, and, and here he is, and he can see him, and surely that must add to his torment. While he's in pain and agony and suffering, there he sees that beggar that had nothing there in Abraham's bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he, dip, may, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Hell is real, friend. Hell is real. Just as surely as I stand before you today, the, the beggar that is no longer a beggar but for the use of of uh, who he was, the beggar is in heaven with the Lord. And as sure as I stand before you today, the, the, the rich man is in hell. Hundreds of years later, I believe the beggar is still enjoying the, the pleasures of heaven. While I believe with all my heart that rich man is in hell and he's crying, Oh, one drop of water, one drop of water on my tongue. One drop of just one drop. Don't want a glass. Just one drop. Can you see that? Can you all see that? One drop of water. Listen to me now. People in hell today would give all their earthly riches that they had for that one drop of water. One drop of water. And I believe he's there today crying out. 
Give me one drop, one drop. Please send a, please send Lazarus and give me one drop of water on my tongue that it may cool this flame. The Bible describes hell over and over in the scripture as being a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, of being a place where the fire is not quenched and where the worm dieth not. And friend, I'm telling you today, people that die and go to hell, they, the moment they open their eyes in the pit of hell, they wish they hadn't have done that. Oh, friend, today it is important for you to be able to answer the question in your heart. I don't care if you're five years old, if you're 105 years old. It's important in your life right now that you be able to answer the question, if I die right now, I'm going to go to heaven or I'm going to go to hell. You've got to answer that question between you and God. And if it's in hell that you lift up your eyes, you need to call on God and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus uh, evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray therefore, Father, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would ascend him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Not only was this rich man a believer after he went to hell, hey, whenever when people die and go to hell, they immediately they believe in the plan of salvation. They believe in Jesus Christ. They believe in God. They believe all the things that you and I believe now. They believe it when they open up their eyes in hell. He believed all of that then, but it was too late. It was too late. The worst two words in the English language is too late when you hear that coming from someone that's died lost without God and in hell without him. And oh, this rich man, he, you know, he, he knew it was too late. He said, well, I, I don't want my brothers to come. Please send, please send someone along to tell my brothers about Jesus that they don't have to come to this terrible place. Abraham, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come in this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. He said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went, one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. Though one rose from the dead. He said, you, They'll either believe like, like uh, Lazarus believed, or they won't believe. My friend, today the question is, do you know the Lord? You see, you want to know, well, preacher, I don't want to go to this place called hell. I've heard about it all my life, but I don't want to go to this place called hell. What do I do? Let me tell you a simple story real quickly. This man named Jesus came into this world and was born of a virgin. He came because man's sins were many and there was no way for man to get to God except through this man Jesus that came into this world born of a virgin. This man Jesus came in the form of a man. He lived in, the, he lived in, the, in this uh, body of flesh and he lived sinless and was perfect all the days of his life. And this man came to do one thing. He came to die on the cross of Calvary. And on that appointed day, after all that was done to him, he went to Calvary and he bore my sin on Calvary. Amen. He who knew no sin became sin for me. And he took my place on the cross and he bore my sins. He bore the sins of many, the Bible says. Who's the many? It's you. It's me. It's all those that, have, that are lost to that God. He, he who knew no sin became sin for them. And he gave his life. He died on the cross of Calvary to pay your sin debt and to pay my sin debt with his blood. For the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses from all sin. Friend, this is a true story. Nothing is made up. Nothing, nothing here I'm telling you is not real. Jesus came. He died. He went, uh, he went to the grave. And on the third day, he arose for our justification. 
Now Jesus is alive at the right hand of the Father today to make intercession for all those that will call on his name. I'll tell you something, friend, today, if you don't know the Lord, you better, you better make sure. You better today know that if you die right now, where will you lift up your eyes? Will you lift up your eyes in heaven or will you lift up your eyes in hell? As sure as I stand here today, this, it's real. It's, listen, the devil don't, don't want me to say anything about where you're going when you leave this world. That's what's wrong in America today. Preachers are afraid to tell people what's going to happen if they don't accept Jesus as their Savior. A preacher preaching like that won't get you a good crowd. Listen, I'd rather have a few going to heaven to be with the Lord than a house full of lost people going to hell that won't, that won't hear the truth. Where will you spend eternity? Everybody bow your head just for a moment. No one looking around. I'm through. You must ask yourself this question. 